This is an NYY Sports Talk podcast presented to you by Baseballism, a premium lifestyle apparel brand inspired by America's pastime. Baseballism is America's brand. Now batting for the New York Yankees, the shortstop, number two. Welcome back. This is episode 107 of the NYYST podcast presented to you by Baseballism.com. I'm your host, Christian. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Chris. You! And it's Stack Guy Rye. What up? Uh, it's 10 o'clock at night. For us, it's about 10 minutes after the Yankee game ended. But for regular people that didn't have anything else to do today but watch baseball, it's about six hours after the game ended. Stack Guy Rye is such a crazy nutcase that he watched the game in real time, then came over here and watched the game with us. And then when I get home, I'm going to watch the encore. <laughs> and we tried well, We tried to black still, out. It didn't work. Well, I for, told you. If for, I told you. Well, let's just go over that. For, I said delete and, all your apps. All right, are you done? Yeah. Okay. For anybody that didn't catch episode 106, and shame on you, you should have listened 106 to it. 106 in Park. Uh, Chris and I were very busy today. We, I mean, we could have watched an inning here, listened to a little bit there, but we wanted to watch the game in full because it was opening day. So we made a pact to do a blackout. And then like 20 minutes into the game, Chris is like, this is too tough. I can't do this. And I called him out on it. I said, listen, bro, we're supposed to be boys. I don't we're... even think the game started yet. No, it was like 120 when you texted me. <clears throat> oh, my God. I was like, listen, bro, we're supposed to be boys right here. Like, we're in this together. It was tough, man. You know what? I was so busy today that it wasn't that bad. And then I made it to 4 o'clock, and I was on my way home. I was like, I cannot believe I actually did it. I, I couldn't believe I actually did it. Then I, I came home. I went upstairs to go say hello to my wife. My wife goes to me. She says, "Did you?" She says, "You really did it. You really don't know anything about the game today, right?" You lost it. You flipped. No, and I said, and I said to her, and I said, "I said no. I said, I swear to God, I could complete blackout. Like I called my mother to make sure that my father wouldn't call me today. <laughs> I, my mother's like, why don't you? First of all, I called my mother, right? And I said, I said, Mom, make sure Daddy doesn't call me today. And she goes. Why don't you want your father to call you? <laughs> you don't love your father anymore? I was like, listen, no, no, no. I was like, listen, we're all busy today, and we're all going to watch the game later. I just don't want him calling me about the game. She goes, oh, okay. <laughs> like, listen. She didn't understand. I had an automated message set up on my on my cell phone. It said, if, anyone, idea, if anyone texted me, it said, this is an automated message. Please do not text me about the Yankee game. I am taping it and watching it later. Thanks. I am not receiving notifications. If this is urgent, reply urgent to send your notification through. I didn't put that part. That's just iPhone has that built in in case my kid was getting rushed to the hospital. Anyway, that didn't work because the someone I was in the vicinity of decided that they were going to watch the game on their phone. I couldn't hear it, right? But some other wise asses around me Decided to blurt out scores. And he said it's 3 nothing. And in my head, I knew he wasn't joking. He didn't say who was winning. I knew he wasn't joking, but I left it reserved like maybe he was. And then as I'm leaving, I hear 7-2. And I slam the door. That person deserves a punch in the face. I agree. But anyway, right, so I very calmly, I said to my wife, I said, I swear to God, like, I, I did it. Like, I'm so proud of myself. I did it. Ten minutes later, I'm in the bathroom, right? My wife walks in to get something out of the bathroom, and she goes, so you mean to tell me that you really don't know what happened in the game? And I don't know why. I don't normally do this, <laughs> and I just lost it. And I said, what the hell did I just tell you? I screamed at her, and she goes, if you ever talk, don't talk. I forget how she phrased it, but she goes, if you're going to talk to me like that, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened in the game. And I was like, oh, my God. And then karma bit me because then I saw I had an email on Gmail, which I only use for Twitter in NYY Sports Talk. Right? And then it was it's a game recap. It's a game from one recap. Of our one of our writers emailed me the game recap. And I saw all I saw was opening day seven and two. And I was like, you dumb son of a bitch. Why would you open that? Because, you know, 
99.9% that that was something about the Yankees. Listen, it didn't matter at that point because I didn't know anything that happened in the game. And that's really all I cared about. If I heard that the Yankees lost, I got to, I'll tell you something. I didn't want to tell you this. I didn't want to you discourage. Know, I, knew you knew. I didn't want to discourage you from coming here because when I said I found something out, you were like, "I'm not coming over. This is bullshit." But I got my car and I forgot to turn off the fan. And as I got in the car, I turned it on and I hear Sweeney Murdy going, "And a big Yankees victory here on opening day." So I knew they won. Didn't That's I- why he was so confident that Luke Voigt hit the home run yeah, the no, first inning. He, he knew. It. He knew. I didn't. didn't know. I warn you that I said, make sure 1019's off your presets. Yeah, on your- listen. They don't but, listen to me. But here's my they don't thing: listen to me. if it was Yankees lost. I would have been upset that I knew the result. Yeah. But I was happy they won, and I didn't know anything that happened in the game, so it was still nice to watch. It was still awesome to watch. And Saturday, I'm telling you right now, if my wife and kids are listening or watching this, do not bother me. I will be glued to my television. Speaking of... I'll wave to you, by the way. I'll wave to you. Is that a 1 o'clock game on Saturday? Yeah. I'm going to the game Saturday. Chris Listen, is upset because before he we thinks keep talking, I, didn't, I didn't want to invite him to the game. Before we keep talking, please leave us a five-star rating review in iTunes. YouTube. Anyone on YouTube? Okay. Nice little comment, subscription, thumbs up. By the way, was it last episode? This is great. This is what I was getting to. By the way, last episode, I don't know if it was last episode, we said... It had to be because the first. It video, was last episode because first instead of we, my wife saying "Wow, that was really mean," she laughed. We said, even if you don't want to leave five stars for the pod, leave five stars for the fact that Chris's wife has to wake up next to this every morning. And somebody, I, I don't, I didn't see the username, but thank you. It was funny as hell. Thank you. Left us five stars because he felt bad for the her. subject was Chris's wife, <laughs> and which, then, which <laughs> one you probably saw that was like, oh, geez. I didn't know where he was taking it or she, but then the comment was like, this is a fiver. (laughs) This is a fiver for Chris's wife. (laughs) And then I remembered you made that comment. Maybe he uh, five knuckle shuffled about your wife. That's, you know what? (laughs) Maybe, maybe. Would would you be okay with that? I don't blame him. I don't even know what that is. Oh, you know what, right? Can can I do that on video? Ah, I'm not Googling it. The five knuckle shuffle? Not... I don't know, man. Just <laughs> move on. All right, we'll move on. You made Ryan uncomfortable. He did. You, you always do. Google it. You know who five knuckle shuffled today? John Cena. Luke Voigt. Mm. Uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> well, Greg Bird. Do you know what the five knuckle shuffle is? Oh, yeah. All right, so how did he do it? Well, he did after it. After he hit the home run, he was so excited. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Greg Bird... In the beginning of the game was like, I can't believe my career's over. Um, he was probably crying in, in the clubhouse. And, hey. So credit to Greg Bird for hitting that meaningless home run when it was 6-2 to in the eighth inning, right? Because I don't want to know what could have happened to Greg Bird today. Because the worst possible thing that could have happened did happen when Luke Voigt smashes a three-run home run in the first inning. And then he strikes out three times. And on top of it, the fans are booing. They're booing. Greg They're booing Bird. hard. That was a bomb, too. 428 feet. And you know what? Not to rip Greg Bird, I think it was awesome that he had that home run. He should have made that play for for Miggy mm-hmm. at third today, too. That was actually a really, really nice play by, by Miguel Andujar. What he should have done was come off the bag and prevent this, the runner from going to second. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, for me, not he so much. He could have stretched for it, but that, what was that the score been... at that point? Was it four nothing? Yeah, I mean, at that point, when you're that close to it, it's not like it was out of his reach. It got know, under his glove. Kind of was. Though. It really wasn't. Yeah, his go glove back was and watch there. it. His glove was there. Go back and watch it. it he yeah, but he wasn't. He wasn't close to the. He was also off the bag, wasn't he? No, he was still on the bag. At the, the end bag. of the day, you're right. Technically, he should have just stopped the ball, but you're trying to save a really nice play from for a guy who. Got ripped for his defense all last year. You got to make that play, though, if you're not going to come off the bag. Or at least stop the ball. You know, we weren't really planning on doing a pot today, but we were saying to ourselves, you know, 
if the Yankees win and, uh, you know, the Yankees win, we should just hop on here for a few yeah. minutes. And I thought we you should know. do that, too. You know, yeah. if they lost, fuck it. We're not doing it. You know, the fans will probably be excited. Figure nothing's going to happen on Friday. Nothing's happening on Friday. There's so. no game tomorrow. Yeah. That sucks. You know, what? that sucks. You get so does, excited but yeah, yeah, about the season you starting. Then you got to fucking deal with a you day gotta, off. I get why. it. I get it. Did they do that last year? They didn't have to do they that. They didn't, didn't have to. Have we just, to yeah, we said this downstairs because uh, they, were in a dome. they were in Toronto. But opening day last year at Yankee Stadium did get, was it snowed out? It was snowed yeah. out, yeah. Was it really? It snowed, yeah. Ooh, Mariners beating the Red Sox 10-4 to 4 right now. I said that mm. We're already scoreboard ago. watch. <laughs> Sale got lit up. He gave up seven runs in two and two-thirds, and he's got a nice sexy 23 and we're si- And you know what? Yeah. We're sitting downstairs, and Christian's going... Score was like eight four. He's going. Oh, Red Sox will come back. No, it was seven I'm like, to Bro, two. It's it, a new season right now. It was now. seven to two, and then it was eight. Don't four. tell me that the Red Sox are going to continue to to come back over and over again this year because I can't handle it. No, that's I can't soft, handle man. it again. It was every game last year. I'm very self conscious about the every video game today. Why is that? Because I shaved. Like I never shaved to the skin. You look good on that. You look did. good, man. And I did. What jersey are you wearing? Nine, number 99. Number 99. Uh, I, I only own one jersey, and Stanton. I didn't even buy it. Stanton. Yeah. They always win when I wear this. Why don't you tell Why don't you tell fans who gave you that jersey? You, bitch. That one. Hey, listen. Real nice. Look, see what I, I do nice things for him. I give him an official Alex Rodriguez jersey, and he calls me a bitch. Hey, you can't wash that shirt. No, I wash it. Until they go on a losing streak. No, it works. It's just me wearing it. I don't know. I've washed I it. I wouldn't wash it. All right, I won't. In high school, I wore the same socks yeah, but every that single game that without was washing because it. You were a dirty. Did anybody see Kenny <laughs> Powers line today? Did he pitch? Kenny Who, Powers. Who's that? Kenny Powers. Did he I pitch didn't know today? he was still pitching. Oh uh, yeah, he came up with Texas. You didn't hear about that? <laughs> did he? Did they really do something for him? What? Kenny Powers. You know who Kenny Powers is? Yeah. He's the guy that down. the guy that looks like him. Oh my God, you guys are ridiculous. He just, he just made a really shitty joke. That was a joke. Uh, somebody posted. Somebody no, tweeted funny. baseball is back, but put a picture of Kenny Powers. <laughs> yeah. so That's good. All right. So what what are some other takeaways from this game? I'll tell you right now. My biggest takeaway. What? Adam Adovino stuff, man. Stuff. Holy shit! You look up filth in the dictionary, dude. I didn't know his stuff was like that. Honestly, I knew his slider was like that. I didn't yeah, know his that fastball. Two seam. He throws sliders, I don't even, sliders I don't even for the players. He, he calls that a two seam. I think that's a four seam fastball. No, that's not a four seam fastball. I know, but I think he classifies it as a four seamer. Let me tell you something, man. That and that pitch, splitter is it a splitter he's throwing? The, it's a, I know he throws a slider. That, uh, but, but that whatever dip. that is that has that two seam tail like that, crazy dude. Against a lefty, lefties aren't touching that. Yeah, but no. we saw well, the big takeaway from the game today is we saw the Yankees' formula for winning games this year: home yep. runs and bullpen. Yeah, and, and, and Tana- but Tanaka was too. really good. Tanaka, he did. He gave up one earned run. He got uh, the because uh, of the error. Like, did they give that to Andujar? Yes, it was an EPS. Yes. Uh, the the error. So only one earned run. He struck out five over five and two thirds. He was good. Uh, he said that he didn't ha- he didn't really have a great split today. Yeah, he Tana- frustrated. I, out po- there I tweeted this out before opening day. Tanaka's opening day numbers for the Yankees to to date before this game, obviously zero and three with twelve and a third innings pitched, thirteen earned runs, calculating to a nine point four nine ERA. He was really good today. So that's what it is. You get a Yankees starter to limit damage through six, and you go right to that bullpen. Okay, but let's also talk about the fact that they were playing a double-A team. I mean, that helps, too. All right, so what? They're only going to win no, against the Orioles no, this year? No, no, Because last no. year they couldn't beat bad teams, no. remember? What I'm saying is you're right. That is the formula. Will it always look this easy? No. They still need – look, we saw something out of Judge and Stanton and, you know, a couple of guys today. Judge scored three runs today. We saw them get on base with his, singles. His, his OPS is uh, one one point four six right now. Yeah, and Kashner was up to fifty pitches in into the third inning. So I mean, there's they're seeing a lot of pitches, and that's always a good sign. This is the big question from today. You know, you get Judge gets on with a single, Stan gets on with a single, Voigt smashes the home run. That was a big statement from Luke Voigt today. Mm-hmm. Big statement to his manager, really. 
keeping him in that four hole too. Is I mean, it's only one game, but he made a statement immediately. He put a stamp on this game in the first inning. Is Luke Voigt for real? It may be. Um, I mean, I mean, we've been asking this, this question is, all off season, but now we're a game into this. I, it, again, it's the game into the season. I understand that. Look, mm-hmm. you know the term "fake it till you make it." I'm not saying Luke Voigt is faking anything. You don't fake talent in baseball, but he was so high last year. He was yeah. on such a high. What was it? 14 home runs in 47 15 games. 15 home runs in 49 games, or something stupid. Now, this guy's got all the confidence in the world. He comes out and hits a three-run homer on opening day at Yankee Stadium. Dead center, not a cheapie, too. Is this guy just going to ride this wave Yes, into into stardom? Mm-hmm. We did our staff, we did our written yeah, staff preview. Uh, we posted it w- uh, late Tuesday, Wednesday. So I forget when it went up. But one of the questions was uh, who is going to be the starting first baseman by the end of the year. And honestly, I answered Greg Bird. I I don't know why. I I guess I got convinced by people that were talking about Bird that the Yankees still believe in his talent, blah, blah, blah. And that the fairy tale of Luke Voigt would end. But then after now, after today, I I mean, it's one game. But let's not go crazy. I understand that. But he immediately he just he immediately went. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's what I'm talking about. Energy. It's the energy. He's riding that He's way. A Yankee. And you know what? If Bird's gonna come up and produce two, you're gonna see both of these guys oh, on this yeah. team all year. And Guardy's right Gardy, gonna go on the bench. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing wrong with Stanton playing the outfield. There's nothing wrong with it. Not when you have this kind even, of talent. I didn't think I saw a ball hit to left field. I don't think today. there was a ball. But it was, uh, Guardy's ball should have been caught. Yeah. yeah. I Tanaka mean, should have had zero earned runs yeah. today. You're going you're gonna to hate on Guardy. No, no, no. That, it's a tough fly ball. First of all, he's not a center fielder. He's a, he, he was a center fielder. Yeah, but he's primarily been a left fielder no, for the tail end of his career. Uh, and a ball hit right at you over your head like that is not an easy ball to play, we, especially on opening day. What were we talking about when that ball was hit to the right field wall and the batter didn't even want it? Oh, my God. God, he didn't even want to. He shit his I mean, pants. He scorched that ball, but the fact that he didn't even think about going he to Tyler second waited on that, at first base. I mean, usually you would see a, a hard turn over first, but I mean, he just didn't even move. Man, Judge got that ball in so Judge didn't fast. even exhibit his power today, but you saw signs of how good he is with the the single. My biggest takeaway from Aaron Judge today, crazy as it sounds, his eye at the plate. He didn't even pull. He didn't even attempt to pull anything. His today. eye at the plate is. If he's going to be that kind of guy this year, and I think everything was, we predicted is going to come true. I think it was Paul O'Neill before the game today that said, Judge does not pull anything in spring uh, in, uh, in, batting in batting practice. practice. He wants to go up the, up, up the middle to right field. Well, like, every hitter approach. should be that way. Every hitter should have that approach. Yeah, but you see guys that just want to put on a show. I mean, he puts on a show in spring. In a, why do I want to keep saying spring training? Probably know. because he's been saying it so damn long. Yeah. He yeah. wanted to – he does put on a show in batting practice, but there's some guys that are only out there to, to get their hacks in, right. you know, and pulling the ball all the time. Right. Listen, I saw a lot of good things today. It's the, one game. This game could have been like – if if it was warmer out, Miguel Andujar probably hit a couple home runs today. Maybe Gardy gets a hold of one. You take so, things, I mean, it's, it's early. You take things both ways, though, right? Last year, this team started 9-9 nine nine in 18 games, and we'd sit back and say, look, it's 18 games. Give it a break. They'll be okay, and everyone would come back to us and say, every game matters. It doesn't matter if it's fucking April, May, June, July. It doesn't matter. Every game, Of course, 100%. But it's a little different when your team starts off hot Mm-hmm. To be excited and to say, I saw a lot of good things from this team. This team's going to be very promising this year. It is just one game. It doesn't mean much in the grant. This team needs to produce year throughout the entire year. But when you have positive things to take out of a game and nothing else, I what's the what's a negative you can take out of this game? Not much. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm I, trying I, to think. I mean, of when one, your I team know. wins seven two on opening day and you have a couple big big home runs and you know there's not much you're taking I think away the only negative thing you could take away is that they did leave some runners on base that was it yeah, they but seven, does it matter yeah, they when you put up seven runs they, they had, had they had bases loaded uh with no outs in two separate it, innings in okay. this game that did bleed that was something that was a problem but they last won. year and it blew no, up they won though i know i'm just no 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 i understand no no 
I understand. I'm saying they won, so you're not looking at the negative things. You're you're embracing the positive. Oh yeah. Great and bird. we're not sitting here saying they're the greatest team in the world because they won opening day but they're in against first the place. Orioles. They're in first place. But they're fucking in first place, and you better watch out. <laughs> uh, the game was over as soon as the ball hit uh, Luke Ford's yeah, bat. Yeah, and you knew it. Let's talk about, real quick, that hype video. The Stack Guy Rye hype video? Let me tell you something. Phenomenal. Thank you. Phenomenal work. Thanks. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I mean, seriously, Ryan, it sucked, uh, and I, I wanted know. to. It was, it was terrible. Yeah, it, was it was, it was so bad. People cried. The, Yan- the Yankees we had, had to, the Yankees had to crying. dust off John Turturro to make a decent hype. Yeah, really. Oh, if I had a Turturro brother good. in there, I mean, I would have won an Academy Award. That Jesus. wasn't even good. Uh, for, yeah, it was okay. For a, but it's your typical. That was your for typical. An, for an amateur fan edited hype video and we probably saw it didn't sleep for three months that's why he's energized a little yeah, bit more bro, today he hasn't slept again. in three months and we've probably seen about a dozen of them come out over the course of the week first of all most of them were like 30 seconds to a minute ryan's was like a full friggin' movie trailer well, we talked about this he was putting it all together and it hit me and i didn't say anything because i didn't want to discourage him i knew he had worked so hard but i said to him the other night i was like uh by the way Twitter cut you off at like two minutes and 20 seconds. So he actually had to go back in mm-hmm. and really cut the fat yeah, if you see to it, make it work. The video is exactly two minutes and 20 yep. seconds. And this, honestly, and I give you a lot of credit, that was so slick how you put the too low, uh, you like that? DJ LeMay, you the double best. play in. If you go, you're not a big Reddit guy. I'm not really I've a big never, Reddit I guy. I probably have never actually been on Reddit. Uh, but Reddit, Reddit's, when you're doing stuff like this, it's really important because everyone on Reddit Will is cutthroat. They'll tell you like it is. Is it called Reddit because you read it on there? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, like, I read it. Okay. So, okay. Read it, okay. so we had so many comments on this video, so many upvotes. Yeah, it was call awesome. Comments. Thank and, you, everybody, for and watching. one of the comments was like, but dude, did you even know that like you had a Rockies clip in there? Yeah, and everyone someone, was ripping him. Someone comments under and he goes, uh, that was a DJ LeMay you highlight. And then he comments again. He goes, edit. It was a DJ LeMay Troy Tulowitzki nasty double play. And that got upvoted like a hundred times yeah, it was double because or people triple. noticed and put it in and started commenting on that a lot too. That was a great move. The, the core zone. Thing. Oh my god! I mean, that just that took that's, it to another that's level. That's what gave me the idea because I was screwing around on piano. But you know one what day. I love about the core zone part? What is that to us? To anyone who watches the Yankees in this area? I was a little upset today that there was no core zone. I know. Yeah, it yeah, was a little Fiora upsetting. Played at some some mediocre commercial. But anyone today. who yeah, watches it was about like saving somebody's life. Yeah. Anyone there, who so. watches the Yankees the in this me. area, you know that core zone. You oh, know no, that that dominated every like when you were. When the game was ten nothing Yankees and the core zone shit would come on, you'd be hyped up. You'd be like, "Do you understand Dude, the graph?" But then when they were losing ten nothing, you'd be like, "Just fuck your core zone commercial. I can't fucking take it anymore." So like everyone kind of relates to that. But the cool thing is, is that it's still because there's so many Yankee the fans. Red Sox win the World Series and and uh, Damian Bashir comes on and goes, "Do you understand the, <laughs> the gravity of your illness?" And but the like Red Sox win the World Series. But the best part about it was that. There's so many Yankee fans throughout the country. Anyone watching the Yankees on the West Coast right. doesn't know the Corazon commercial. So to them, it was just like, what the fuck is this playing? But to the the niche here, the target audience here, yeah. they got it. It meant something yeah, to them. Yeah, that's who I made it for. So I made it, it for the, the I thought that was Yankee awesome. Fan. I just thought it was awesome all around. If you haven't watched it, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's on our YouTube page. So, all right, why don't we uh, kick it to our sponsor real quick, and then we'll wrap up. We'll preview what we're going to be doing Deal. Uh, going forward here now that the season has started. So let's hit up our sponsors. Hey, have you heard about baseballism? <laughs> a premium lifestyle apparel brand focusing on the class, tradition, and history of baseball. You can find everything from accessories such as phone cases and watches to your next favorite baseball tee. Whether you're a player or just a fan of the game, Baseballism has something for everyone. They also have multiple stores, including one in Cooperstown, home of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Hop online to baseballism.com and check out all they have to offer. Just be sure to use promo code NYYST at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Baseballism, a brand built for love of the game. Uh, 
All right. Thank you to Baseballism.com for sponsoring the NYYST podcast. Uh, definitely hit them up on Baseballism.com. NYYST will save you 15% on your order. <laughs> you want to say car insurance? I do. I want to say it so bad. I used a joke one time, and now and it's now just like stuck it's in my... natural. Now it's just like I want to say it. Mm-hmm. I don't blame you. All right. Um, so now the season started. We're officially underway here. We're Yanks one and zero, oh, undefeated, awesome. undefeated. Going one, undefeated. Okay. We're going one seventy three and zero this year. Oh, all right, we're going to win every single game this year. Oh, all right. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And for anyone who's sitting there going, "Fucking guy thinks he's one hundred seventy three games in a fucking season," I'm turning this podcast off right now. He meant the eleven games you got to win in the postseason, right? Because you know I, somebody's out there thinking. I'm that. telling you, I'm telling you right now. Someone thought it, and if you thought it, and you're still listening and laughing, good for you. So we're gonna most weeks we'll say ninety nine percent of the time. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Uh two pods. It'll be a midweek show either recorded Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when the Yankees play. If they have a day game or a day off, that's when we'll record. Uh and then, you know, we'll do Sunday after the game and then uh for Monday release. So our next pod will be recorded after the Yankees complete their series with the Baltimore Orioles. On Sunday, I'll be going to the game Saturday for James Paxton's Yankee debut. Oh, awesome. Pax. Hell yeah. I am very, honestly. Fucking Pax, baby. J Pax. I'm very excited J-Pax. to see this guy J-Pax. pitch. I'm very. I'm, me, too. me too, man. Let me tell you something to do. I watched a little clip. You should really go back and try and watch the pregame. Because... You should go back and do it, son. I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> yeah, you, that were, you had a little, like, frog. You, you should like, go back. <laughs> you should go back. And watch the pregame. They did some cool like clips with some of the players. Paxson's brother runs like some baseball camp, and he said he's like he's like I take this very seriously. And he's like that's why I'm gonna fit in here. And he's like this is the best shape I've ever been in my entire career. I killed an eagle. Okay, you know he's, he's awesome. awesome. Okay. Just say this on him. This is my favorite thing. He about. has a fucking maple leaf the size of his the forearm. Got, first of all, he's got to wear long. He's got to wear long sleeves. He's got to. He's got. Come on, bro. He's got to embrace just that eagle. Canada. I love Canada. that. I love that his stuff gets better as the game goes on. If you really, if you watch specifically this, his his no hitter last year. If you see inning by inning when he starts smelling that no hitter, his fastball gets harder and harder. Did he, he throw a no? Great did he complete yeah. the no hitter? He threw the no hitter, and then I think he backed it up with a 16K game. Oh yeah, it was either I mean, the next start or pitcher. right Seriously. after that. He's a good pitcher, and and him and Ottavino, those two guys are going to be really fun to watch. It's going to come down to one thing for Paxton: his health. If he's yeah, healthy, totally. he's going to be nasty. Totally. All right, so uh, a little opening day pod here. Yankees win seven to two on uh, oh. Thursday afternoon. Boston they is currently losing 12-4. 12-4 now. Oh yeah, we're running away with this. Or running away did with Greg this. Kimbrell sign Boston's yes, did Greg Kimbrell sign? Did they sign? Boston's about to do something they haven't done in two years. What? Fucking lose. Lose the game? Did they sign Kimbrell yet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I saw he signed with the Long Island Ducks. Do you think Kimbrell's watching this game right now, like, doing a maniacal laugh? Like, he wants, he's like, it's work. <laughs> well, it's not the, the bullpen Yank- that's the reason why they lost. It's or Chris- yeah, Hale. but it doesn't help. I mean, it's opening yes. day. Look, in all seriousness, we're it's joking. One game. We're yeah, joking. It's one game. It's okay, let us embrace it. Let us embrace it. Yankee fans it's a good Twitter, feeling. Let's the stay positive. Over. You got to fucking stay positive. Yeah. Yankee right? fans stay on positive. Twitter are all over the Red Sox game. right now. It's fine. I mean, but, but come let's, on. But the Red Sox come on. suck this year. Come on. Haven't even won a game Got to embrace it, baby. Let's do it. You can't get to, you can't get to, I mean, you can get to 100 without winning the first one, but, you know, it's nice to win the first one. It does wait, feel good. We waited so long for this. With a nice, easy. All right. Easy win today. Before we wrap it up, okay. Let's say predictions on the series. Sweep. Where's my broom? Sweep, sweep, sweep. Actually, they're gonna sweep, sweep their first two series. Let's do it. Year. Let's do it. They're not Let's losing. It. They're not losing a game this whole month. Okay, deal. <laughs> well, no, we'll be serious. back Sunday, but all of us will be there Tuesday, right? We're all going to the Tiger game Tuesday. Hey, right, so who will be pitching hey. then? You got Pax in the uh, That will actually be an opener. No way. Yeah. We're going to the opener? We're going to the opener. I'm not going. I'm staying home. So Somebody we'll be seeing home. green. Yeah. No, that's not definite yet, is it? It sounds like it All right. is. I'm down. So awesome. I'm down. Last time Big Chad Green opener, started man. a game I went to, uh, Aaron Judge yeah, hit we a ball were, 500 yeah. feet. Yeah, so. He, did, so. he okay. always hits home runs when I'm there. So. so that'll be great. 
it'll, it's going to be like 48 degrees, probably drizzling, and we're going to get to see Chad Green pitching and then the immortal Luis Sessa come out of the bullpen. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's win. All right. Let's win. We, we could get to this on Sunday, hopefully after the Yankees complete an opening uh, series sweep against the O's. Thank you for listening to episode 107 of the NYYST podcast. Check out our sponsors at Baseballism. Uh, check us out at NYY Sports Talk. Stack Guy Rye. Go Yanks. Chris, say goodbye. Peace.